Hey there, YouTube. Air of Carthage here. <clears throat> I, I wanted to make another online video for you tonight that I'll upload at the same time as part 15 of the Tokugawa campaign. And I figured I'd do something a little bit different. Um, figured I'd take you into matchmaking and we'll do this live. Here's Patchy. I changed his helmet and some of the other things. Uh, so he may not have the floating wings anymore. Um, you, <clears throat> you'll also see I don't have any clan tokens. And that's because uh, I actually bought some clan upgrades for some of my units. Here's my veteran units. I have 38 of them. I could easily have more, um, but I've been trying to consolidate and think of the best types of veteran units to have and how many of them to have, uh, because you don't want to, you know, I definitely want to have an army that's useful to me. There's some of my units that can be upgraded, so I'll just show you that real quick. I don't have enough money for clan tokens right now, but the, the clan tokens can buy you these upgrades down here. So you can see that um, here's the number of clan tokens I have. I only have two. And here's the number of skill points that I have available to spend. It takes one skill point to buy you any of these upgrades, plus the clan upgrades are down here, and it tells you what you have to have to have them. I've used a couple of clan upgrades, and that's why I don't have any clan tokens at the moment. I used them on some of my Lone Sword Ashigaru units. Uh, but as far as this unit, it is a Yari Ashigaru. And some of the things that might be helpful for them, you can see I've already upgraded the melee defense, the morale, and the attack. Um, so, you know, I could I could put speed or fatigue resistance, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and upgrade the attack on these guys. And right now you can see the current uh, numbers right here. And then you can see that raised the attack from 6 to 8. So yeah, that kind of shows you what your upgrade did. So let's see, I can upgrade these Lone Sword Ashigaru as well. And these guys have another melee attack. I'm just going to add to that. That'll make them more potent. And uh, you can see for um, for Lone Sword Ashigaru, these guys have huge stats, and part of that is my retainers also. So retainers play a big role. Now let's see, I've upgraded melee defense, melee attack, morale, and I'm just going to keep upgrading the charge. That'll make these guys more devastating. And let's see, I've done the same here, so I'll go ahead and upgrade the charge on these guys as well. Of course, these upgrades do make these units more expensive, so that's the drawback to making your units more and more veteran is eventually they'll get to be more and more expensive. This unit of ninja is too damaged for me to upgrade, so I can't do that at the moment. And um, none of my archers are damaged, because to be honest, I haven't been using a lot of archers recently. Oh, uh, you might also notice that uh, I've someone told me the RGB value, so I've got my mon the exact same color as the US Eggy mon. They don't have the US Eggy symbol as one of your options, so I just picked this one, because it's pretty cool. So in any case, let's go back into the uh, the conquest map here. Let me show you the clan competition. Hopefully it'll work tonight. Yeah, the Air of Carthage clan, uh, or our Air of Carthage fans clan, has climbed its way all the way to uh, to clan tier 4. I think all the way from clan tier 9. So that's pretty cool. And you can see that we're absolutely dominating tier 4. <laughs> and um, we're going to be moving on to tier 3, it looks like. And I'm kind of interested to see how far this goes. Obviously there's a huge number of people in my clan, and that helps. And it's not really a clan, per se. Like I said, it's just it's there to help people earn uh, clan tokens without having to be a part of other clans where they may be selective about who they'd like to enter and all that other stuff. In fact, I can go over here and uh, take a look at our clan page, too. Our statistics have actually really gotten better. I mean, we used to have more, um, we used to have more losses than wins, and now we have a thousand more wins than we do losses, which is great in my opinion. Of course, you know, like I said, this isn't meant to be competitive, so if you're in there and you're not doing very good, like I can see some people on here don't have the best record, that's fine, you know, they, it doesn't bother me, it's not going to make me mad, but see how many members we have? Yeah, so there's 393 members, so that's going to make it pretty easy for us to dominate, because when these people play, it helps get us uh, influence on that clan map. So thank you to everybody who's joined, it, it's really been fun, it's been a good place for me to earn clan tokens, and not to mention, I love... I love seeing that, you know, I've got so many fans, and, like, it, it really uh, makes me honored to know that I have that many fans that are uh, that are out there playing playing these games. So I'm going to go ahead and get started here in matchmaking. We're going to try and find ourselves a match, and I'm going to just try and show you a little bit of my thought process from, from start to finish here. So first of all, I'm going to take a look at my opponent. He's a 9-star, just like me. Um, the map is Secure Ridge. This is the one where you have to rush up and over the ridge quickly. So what I'm going to do here is use a bit of a different army. Um, I'm going to go really heavy on infantry, and sword infantry in particular because of my retainers. I can also field Kisho Ninja, and they're going to be kind of helpful 
Uh, so let, let's build an army based on our plan here. I need to rush, so I don't want to bring a lot of missiles. I'm not interested in a missile fight. Uh, this could end up turning against me, but let's give it a shot. So let's go in here and modify my army. Let's see what kind of veterans I have. Most of my sword veterans are thrashed. Yeah, they're all thrashed. Um, in fact, I'll be showing you the battle where they got thrashed. So I need a ton of sword units. Um, and I'll bring a couple of veteran units to help hold a back line. So I'm going to get a bunch of Nodachi. These guys are great for rushing. I'm going to get six of these dudes. Uh, they're great for rushing because of the Banzai ability. And then I'm going to get a bunch of Katana Samurai. So I'll get five of them. So this is a crap load of sword infantry. And granted, they're not upgraded, so they are going to be a little more likely to rout. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a solid, sturdy uh, back line to help protect my general. So I'm going to get a couple of units of these Spear Ashigaru with good upgrades so that they can hold their ground. And um, I should bring at least one unit of cavalry. Um, I tried a tactic similar to this the other night, so hopefully it'll work out. And I'm also going to bring um, a unit of matchlock. So I will bring... Well, heck, let's see. I'll bring my two units of matchlock. Um, and I'll show you what that's for uh, once we get into the battle. It looks like I have 650 koku left. Um... It's not enough to do my... Oh, I, I meant to bring ninjas. Yeah, I don't want to bring both these matchlock. In fact, I don't even need the matchlock. I'd rather bring the ninjas. Um, I'm going to bring two units of Kisho ninja, and then I have one... I have a little bit of money left over, so I can either bring a light cav or a lone sword. I'll bring the lone sword because I have sword retainers. So you can see I have a rush army here. It's all numbers. This is risky, but on this map, I should... I, hopefully, I can pull it off. You know, we'll find out. Like I said, um, I know this map, so that's part of the strategy that I'm using going into it. And army choice, um, army choice is absolutely critical um, when facing someone, you know, of a high rank. Uh, even if you are a high rank, your army choice has to be critical. Now I'm expecting a lot of people of high rank have really ranked up archer units, and I'm really hoping that my opponent brings stuff like that because in this type of rush situation, it's going to help nullify that. And I also hope that my opponent spends money on some expensive cavalry, because what I'm hoping to do is just rush him and overwhelm his infantry line with my infantry, and get a hold of him before he can really get organized and put up a fight. Sometimes this backfires, it's the way it works, uh, but sometimes it works really well. And um, you can see that I have a very non-veteran army going on here. Another good strategy I could have used here is I could have brought a whole lot of katana cav, but that's risky, because if your opponent brings a lot of naginata or spear infantry, the Katana Cav is going to be less useful than if you just had sword units on the ground, so that's why I'm going with this particular build. Um, I've used a build like this um, to success before. It uh, doesn't mean it's going to happen again. Um, there's not a one-size-fits-all build that always works, um, so you have to be willing to be flexible. Notice I'm putting my, my, uh, my Banzai infantry up front there, my Nodachis, and here's how I'm going to set up my general. I have to keep my... oh, whoops. I didn't realize I did that. I have to keep my general safe. Um, I can at least keep him safe from cavalry charges. It's going to be harder from archer fire. And I'm probably going to put my general into the stand and fight mode. And that's going to make my, my infantry that much more dedicated and potent. So I'm going to put spears surrounding my general. One in the front, one in the back. And I'm going to keep this Yari cav close. And the point of the Yari cav will be to slow down any incoming cav charge that might become dangerous. I'll put these uh, Lone Sword Ashigaru in the vicinity as well. And then my two ninjas, what I'm going to do is go ahead and hide them up here on top of the hill. And hopefully I can get a nice flank deployment uh, on my opponent. In fact, I'll put them right here, and it could even act as a, as a great distraction. It's going to depend on the spotting range. He may have archers that can spot them from long distance. In fact, I'll put one on each side. Battle's going to start in 30 seconds, so i got to get moving. Okay, so now what I'm going to want to do is just get all my infantry, or pretty much all my troops except for my ninja, I'm going to group them into a formation so I can move them quickly, so I push G. And then I'm going to be ready to double-click right up here and get my troops just hauling butt right up this hill. Alright, my opponent has deployed off to the side. Not sure I like that. I want him to rush this hill because my strategy depends on him rushing the hill. So if he doesn't, um, this could end up being a very interesting battle. Yeah, see, he's not, he's not playing into what I want him to do. But regardless of what happens, um, well, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and take the hill. The height advantage will help since I didn't bring any archers. Let's check out his army. Let's see, he's got some, some Bo Ashigaru. Two of them there. Naginata monks. More Bo Ashigaru. 
some matchlock. He's got a lot of bows, and that, that's going to work to my favor. He doesn't have a lot of sword infantry. I'm not sure what kind of... I mean, this may be his only cab out here. He's got uh, two units of great guard. And uh, regardless of how my opponent's deploying, I'm going to take the hill. And um, if he tries to use his archers, I can always back up and try and draw him forward. Uh, but I'm not going to give up this high ground, especially since I didn't bring the archers. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I'm not really sure why my opponent wanted to run to the side like this. Maybe he just assumed I would immediately rush the hill, which I obviously did. Um, but uh, I still want to capture the high ground regardless. And I can actually use these trees for cover uh, from his archers as well. So I'll go ahead and uh, move my units in that direction. I can ungroup my units now if I wish. So there we go. And uh, let's get my general. I'm going to pull Patchy right up here around my troops because I want him to uh, use his fatigue resistance aura to help my men rest from all that running. And I need to get my men well rested uh, before this fight begins. So you can see me here just pulling all my troops into a formation. I've got the trees for archer cover. Uh, he can fire into the trees. I could put my men on loose formation and soak up a whole lot of archer fire um, without, you know, really taking significant casualties. The archer, uh, the trees provide excellent archer cover. So here my, my opponent's really revealing his army. He has come very missile heavy, and that's going to work to his disadvantage. But, um, but I, I can't take his army for granted because my, my Nodachi samurai are extremely vulnerable to missiles. And so I've got to, I've got to remember that. And he's got some good cavalry here, but um, cavalry can be fairly easily nullified if you use the terrain um, and other things to your advantage. I do have this other unit of Kisho Ninja I'm going to move up here. Uh, you want to check from time to time just to make sure your ninja are staying hidden. Uh, if they become visible, then that kind of lets your opponent know uh, what's going on. My opponent's moving his matchlock forward here. That's fine. I'm going to let him move these guys forward. Uh, you can see he's really not going to have an angle on me because of this hill. So he can move them as far forward as he wants. I'm really not concerned about it. I am going to make sure, though, that my Kisho Ninja are not on fire at will because I don't want them to accidentally get in range and hurl their grenades and uh, make and you know ruin ruin the surprise there. I'm just going to let him run this matchlock unit about as far out of position as he can get it, and then maybe I'll just be able to get an easy kill here. See, he's going to wheel up here, but check out again the terrain. He's not really going to have any shots. And he's really let these guys get a long ways out of position, so I'll go ahead and start charging my cav up. I don't want to do too much with him, though, because his archers are probably within supporting range. And if his matchlock fire while my cav are still in the woods, it's going to mean uh, less, you know, yeah, see, there you go. See, I can easily chase off those matchlock. They're no worry. Uh, that's one of the problems with matchlock is that you do have to consider the terrain. My opponent's really trying to bait me out, and I'm not going to take that bait. I mean, he knows I'm holed up here in the woods and that I can use it for cover. He really should have rushed the hill. Um, he should have rushed in, he should have met my infantry, immediately started firing his archers into my infantry and, and try and cause a lot of trouble. Uh, that's really what he should have done. He didn't, and so I'm going to make him pay for that. Again, he can wheel up here and try and get shots. The terrain is most definitely not in his favor, and he's going to have to get really close. Uh, I am going to back up my two units of Kisho Ninja, though, because I don't want them to, again, be exposed by this. Yeah, see, he's, he's firing. But uh, I don't even have, like, an indicator up here that any of my units are under attack. That's how ineffectual this is going to be. And he's got his great guard up here. And, you know, this, like I said, the woods is really going to make this kind of attack really ineffectual. Um, it, it's it's uh, not going to be very good. Oh, he can see my ninja there with one of his units. So he, do he knows I have ninja on the field, but he doesn't know how many. And another thing you can do with your ninja once they've been spotted is you can move their, uh, just move them to a different position, and your opponent may think that, oh, he'll keep him in the same position. And that's the spotting range that some of these units have when people upgrade their units. Uh, even not upgraded missile units have a lot better spotting range. So your ninja aren't always invisible. I'll go ahead and move my ninja over to here. Yeah, you can see that, that I mean, this is really not going to do my opponent any good. Yeah, he can scoot up even closer if he wants. He's still not going to get any good shots. I mean, look at the angle his men have. See, I lost one no dodgy. I mean, it's just really not doing anything. So I'll let him think that he's actually accomplishing something here. You can see he's got his general back here. He may try and inspire his men or, or keep their morale up or, 
whatever he thinks that he's accomplishing in this bid. He really wants my men to come out of the woods so he can hit me with his archers, uh, but I'm not going to play that game. And right now he's doing a little bit of repositioning with his matchlock. I'm just going to reposition my troops this way. Uh, that didn't exactly work the way I hoped it would. There we go. Yeah, his matchlock got a hold of a few of my men there. You can see he's got a lot of his troops really isolated out here, though. And the more he moves them away from this infantry body over here, the, the more vulnerable they're going to become. So I'm just going to play this game with them and, and, again, let him think that this is a good idea. Because I really disagree that it is. And In fact, I think it's time to act on the fact that I don't think it is. My opponent's not going to be able to stay in this fight very long because um, because I have my spears coming. And so if he wants to stay here and try and defeat my Yari Cav, he's going to end up dealing with my Yari Ashigaru. And he's also going to lose this matchlock unit because they haven't pulled out. So now I'm just going to click the old attack order here. I'll lose my cavalry, but at the same time I'll cause a lot of damage to my opponent's cavalry. My Yari Ashigaru is dying relatively quick. They've caused a number of casualties though to both his units. And my opponent's not going to be able to stay in this fight for very long, though. And if he has to pull out, that's just going to cause uh, yet more, cav uh, more casualties to his men. Though I will lose the mobility that my cavalry provided me with.